So for the router, I was going to show you the how to connect the serial console to these pins here. Now, when I was trying to do the video, I noticed that I had made an error and I wasn't sure why it wasn't working. So you can see we have the power here, ground, GX and RX. So when I connected a, uh, like the serial cable, I'll just, what happened was that this pin here was being pushed down like so when I just inserted the cable. And what happens is that when it was pushed down, then there wasn't a, a ground connection. So if we take a look at the backside, you can see here that it's not really connecting to the terminal on the back right here. So it didn't work. So I actually had to like push this pin down again, like with a finger or something else. And sometimes I had to make sure push it down a little bit more and then, you know, then move it around maybe a little bit, even though you can't really move it around, but make sure that it was touching the terminal, the copper terminal that's below it because otherwise it won't make a ground connection and the serial console wouldn't actually show anything useful. It would just show a lot of garbage. So that's important if you're doing this modification to a router board that you have the ground connection soldered in properly and also of course the other pins, but especially the ground connection. All right, so because the headers are basically a bit too long, we're going, to, we're going to use appropriately sized headers, which are a bit shorter. And we're going to remove this header and then solder on an appropriately sized header. So first we will get four of these. So that's three, that's four. And save the rest of this for other projects and we will need some desoldering thread. And we still have enough left. So you don't use a lot of it, but you may end up using it more if you desolder a lot of stuff and you need to remove it easily. So we're going to see if the soldering iron is ready and try and remove some of the stuff. So it looks like we have removed most of the solder now. Let's see if we can remove a little bit more. So I think that we have removed almost enough. We'll just see if we can get it loose maybe. Not yet. Let's see. We could try and cut them off. Just holding this over so it doesn't fly all over the place. Yeah, there's still some solder left here.
pins are quite stubborn, so I'm using a pair of these to remove it from, remove it manually, in hopes that it will be a lot easier to remove. Because these pins are actually quite well stuck in there. Well, that made it a lot easier. Just pressing Just pressing uh, the soldering iron on the hole. Just pressing it down on the hole and then waiting for the pin to fall out. So we will just move it back again. Remove some of the solder from this port here. Try and see if we can get that last one. This is stop on one. too much so now we can begin again so if we take a look at the terminals we have 5 volts ground GX and RX so RX usually has this little extra square right here so now we can start like we were supposed to begin so we will get one of these headers and plug it in. And you take the long legs facing upwards. And this one is already pushing legs through. I think there's a little bit of extra solder that's blocking the entrance. It's near the solder bridge as well, so we have to be a little bit careful. Because I don't want to redo the solder bridge again. Because there's no soldering mask on the solder bridge or the connectors. So it can be a little bit hard. But now you can see that it's fitting in there. So I'll just turn the board around, make sure I hold it with my finger. And here comes the trigger part because it's not stuck in there anymore. So now we need to like hold this down somehow. So I guess we will use some solder. We can use the thin one if we want to, I guess. Should be more than enough. So I initially used the thick one, but we'll just use the we'll just use the thin one this time. That's uh, 0 0.6 millimeters. Make sure to wash your hands after you're done. So I will just put some. on the tip here and I'll just gently place it in the holder and put this here and see if I can just make one of them stick there we go and then we can try and do the real solder job so there is probably a better way to do this but this method works as well so we will start with this pin over here so let's see give it a 
good amount of solder. Looks good. some of this <laughs> so as I've mentioned before you should probably use a fan or something when you're doing a lot of soldering get some air circulation so now that I've soldered them on, I will just inspect them visually up close. And they look quite nice actually. The terminals look a little bit burned from uh, from the first two soldering sessions and then you know the desoldering and then resoldering a new header on. But all of the connectors are shiny. And they seem to be touching the copper base as well. So, so it should probably work. We could test it before we do anything else. Because you never know. So I could just do a quick test, I guess. Yes, I did, because now it's working. <laughs> nice. I love seeing a zero console once it's working. I can look at it all day. All right, so the connectors are working. So that means that I can do a video about actually showing this on the computer. So that's gonna be the next video. And once you've finished using your your soldering iron, keep in mind that it's very hot for a long time. So be careful when you're moving it. Don't touch the iron. Just uh, if you're moving it after you've turned it off, hold the base or hold it like so. So that way you have firm control over the soldering iron and you also have firm control over the base so that way you're not going to do stupid shit. For example, if you just hold this one, it might fall out. You know, if you're just holding the base, then this one can rattle around. So be careful because soldering iron is really, really hot. Um, it is set to 325 to 50 degrees, something like that. So it's quite hot. Anyway, stay tuned and subscribe.